here's your name. I'm Nico. Nico? Awesome. I think I have met you in the past at one of these little gatherings. You probably don't remember me, but um, I think you were selling tea then. Yes, we. Um, I have another business with my wife, uh, the Gold Lotus Tribe, and we sell meditation tea. Um, but me and my best friend started this company, the Black Lotus Sheila Jeep, because mm-hmm. um, we studied alternative medicine and worked at a health food store for many years. But yeah, we go to all these little events and stuff. Awesome. Where did you study alternative medicine at? Um, mainly on my own, but also at Everglades University. Okay, um, cool. They have a program. That's awesome. I study nutrition nice. right now yeah. at school, UNF in Jacksonville. So it's nothing, um, there's nothing herbal about it, nothing integrative. Uh, about it or naturopathic about it which is what I do love Mm -hmm. and I have had your Sheila Jit. Really? Yes, I have. (laughs) Um, My friend Andrew has a ginormous thing of it. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So tell us a little bit about it. Where does it come from? Is it um, something that is a finite? It'll we only have so much of it in the world? Yeah, yeah, I'll get into it. There's a lot. There's a huge backstory. So Sheila Jit is a resin that comes out of the tallest mountains in the world. Um, we get ours from the Altai Mountains in Siberia, which are some of the oldest mountains in the world. They're one and a half billion years old. Wow. Another really good source is the Himalayas. Um, that's where it's been traditionally used the longest amount of time, for over 6,000 years. Mm-hmm. And But those mountains are only 50 million years old. So okay. we believe that the Altai Mountains have it more. Uh, 50 million versus? Uh, uh, two billion. Or two so. billion. <laughs> Wow. So it's a big difference. Wow. So we believe that ours is the most powerful. And um, yeah, we get it from a really good source who sells to pharmacies in Russia. Um, okay. It's a fifth generation um, business that a lady runs and she goes and collects it during the summers. They're right on the border of Russia and Mongolia. Mm-hmm. Um, so she gets it from the peaks of the mountains and it's super pristine. Like you can see some of the pictures here. It's one of the What's most the process of. Uh forging it is that the right word yeah i guess so um, so <laughs> it is extremely sustainable it uh it comes out of the, the rocks and it never kind of runs out so what they do during the summers is, is when it's kind of like hot enough for it to be malleable and it's not you know super cold because it's mm-hmm. like super about eight thousand feet high or six, 14 to sixteen thousand feet some places mm-hmm. and basically they go and gather the gravel and rocks and they mm-hmm. put them in water and they use like glacier runoff lake water and they get all the gravel out by sifting it and the shilajit dissolves into the water oh. so um, then they let the water evaporate in the sun and this shilajit layer kind of forms on top and it com- it basically turns out exactly like how it came out of the mountain mm-hmm. but without all the sediment yeah. yeah yeah that's so interesting and when i did use it i could not get it off the utensil that I used to yeah. get it out of that plastic thing unless I poured hot water over it. Right, yeah. So, so it gets very hard when it's cold, but it dissolves very easily in room temperature water. The hotter it is, the easier it dissolves. Does the heat uh, potentially damage any of the beneficial nutrients that's within it? Or um, no? As long as not directly boiling, um, okay. it shouldn't interact too much. It's a very, very stable substance. It's kind of like honey where it doesn't technically expire. Since oh, it wow. is like hundreds of million years old. So yeah, yeah. It, um, and we store it in these special ultraviolet Myron glass jars. Mm-hmm. So even in direct sunlight, uh, there it's not damaged at all. And um, yeah, it's, if it dries out, it gets a little hard. You just put a few drops in the in the jar and then seal it. Yeah. And it should like reconstitute um, back to a more malleable substance. Awesome, awesome. So what are the constitutions of it itself? And how has that translated into changing people's health into a better direction. Yeah, well, man, it ha- it's one of the rarest substances on the planet. It's impossible to recreate. It has 85 ionic minerals in the most absorbable form. It has all the vitamins, including B12. It has oh, wow. um, all the amino acids. Um, the vitamins and amino acids are more in like homeopathic trace amounts. Mm-hmm. The minerals, it mainly has a lot of iron, copper, selenium, iodine, mm-hmm. um, zinc. Yeah. All the major ones that we would want. And then um, also all the trace ones that I can't even name all of them. Yeah. It's like a lot yeah. of the periodic table, basically. Yeah. And then um, the amino acids and antioxidants are extremely rare since it's such an ancient um, substance. 
Uh, the antioxidants most well known are the fulvic acid, mm -hmm. which helps to dilate the cell walls and uh, kind of clean them out. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a very tight sponge electromagnetically, mm -hmm. so it pulls everything out of the cell, like the waste, mm -hmm. and then it remineralizes it from the inside out. Wow. Um, and then the humic acid, it's uh, kind of what the forest floor is made of. It's very anti viral antibacterial it's very protective mm -hmm. and um, really excellent for nourishing the cells um, and getting rid of free radicals in the body by yeah. um, changing their electromagnetic um, frequency basically like their uh, it goes from negative yeah. to positive in a way and then it's released yeah, out of the from body. acidic to alkaline right yeah. is another way and to it describe has a that pH yeah. of 8.2 so wow that's a, amazing yeah, it's an alkaline substance yeah um, it helps to detox very efficiently also but very gently because the fulvic acid is like a sponge so it gets those toxins out of the body without taxing the the excretory organs like the liver and the uh, kidneys um, yeah. that's so awesome i love that let's see what else did i want to get into in regards to this substance and you drink this every day Absolutely. what is what is the type uh the typical regimen that someone would have with this um, stuff so we recommend as a kind of uh, complementary dose to your daily life is um, a pea size once a day it's about mm -hmm. 250 milligrams and that's just kind of upkeep uh, you and keep you um mineralized basically from yeah. what we're lacking in the food and the water yeah um but also you can take up to like one or two grams per day. I've taken up to wow. three grams a day. Yeah. Um, it's very safe even in those doses. At first, I would start off small, mm -hmm. maybe like half a pea um, to start off, uh, just to see how you react. And some people are more mineral deficient than others. Yeah. Um, in fact, 90% of people are mineral deficient. And it goes back to food right. and our soil being super depleted right, yeah. these days. And we over pesticide, herbicide, fertilize, all of our foods so even when you're eating a whole food diet you're unfortunately still missing out and we right. fluoridate chlorinate clean our water like crazy yeah, it's so. all filtered and then the water they're using for the crops is filtered so they're not getting it either <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah. so it's i would love to live an unsupplemented life yeah but yeah, yeah. it's just not realistic these days right unless you're literally growing all your own food biodynamically with mm -hmm. something like Sheila G because it's an excellent fertilizer also mm -hmm. um, then you're not getting what you need basically it, it, unfortunately yeah. and that's that's what we're facing and that's why I love permaculture that's what um, I, I, I do. love that yeah because <laughs> it kind of makes you independent from having to go to Walmart and get your groceries depending on other yeah. people that just want your money basically you know Care. <laughs> yeah, we could get into that a little bit if you want. One of my, so when I graduate, I'll be a dietitian, yeah. and most dietitians work in hospitals, and that is far from what I ever want to be is a clinical dietitian. Right. And I have also felt in myself and in my community the need for whole vegetables that still have all their nutrients intact. So I, an idea that I have is to create sort of like systematic community gardens yeah. uh, in which either that I manage or help people cultivate so then they can eat from that and even sell from their own garden if they have an extra surplus of it and allow us as a community to be less reliant on store-bought food. Right, yeah, yeah. And there's so many things that do grow here in Florida. It's not like up north where everything's kind of pretty easy to grow during the summer here you got to really have the specific varieties but it's mm -hmm. definitely possible and like I've been to the regional permaculture and the state permaculture con convergences and um, I've taken the classes and there's this one guy in particular that he grows extremely rich rich soil and the uh, produce he was uh, getting out of his garden was five to five hundred times more nutritious than any like uh, like for example a carrot even an organic carrot from the store had 50 times less vitamin a 
a non-organic carrot has 500 times less. Oh my goodness. So it's like, it really does make a huge difference and that's why people could eat off of so little back then. Like, yeah. you could have one carrot and you'd be good for a while. Yeah, it's the minerals and the micronutrients that I think people should be focusing on and we have this like, oh, what are your macros, dude? Yeah. yeah, they want you to focus on your macros. So you think that you eat a piece of bread or a burger or whatever you're eating and that's all you need to worry about. Right, yeah. And your mind isn't focused on like, okay, the like microscope in, like what's in it? What's it made right, out of? Yeah. What are... It's kind of they're working on the shell and not, they're kind of hollow inside. Their organs aren't in optimal shape and um but they mm -hmm. look good and you know, yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a win-lose but you can definitely <laughs> make it a win-win you know? yeah for sure so um it seems like you have a really interesting journey on finding where you play into this whole how am i going to provide something that not only do i believe in benefits me but it can benefit my community as well yeah. and you have your other business you have this she legit business as well um do you feel like it encompasses your beliefs yeah absolutely